They're making a documentary on um, on the music of South Sligo, really. Yeah. And on the idea of the music being part of the story of the farming life. Farming was the main mainstay of the rural areas, particularly west of Ireland. You know, when you take from Connemara, uh, Clare, Roscommon, Mayo, Sligo, Donegal, all that area, farming was nearly 100% of the occupation of the people. It was a hard life, I suppose, but then, <laughs> it was not too easy anyway, it was, yeah, you, 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 you had to get out in the morning and milk your cows, you milk nine or ten cows with your hands, milk them with your hands, strain the milk, put a strainer into the pails, and um, prepare to cool the milk, you cool the milk, there was no modern cooling methods then, you cooled the milk usually in a spring well or a running stream. You took your can to a run the stream, popped it down in a run the stream and waited for the milkman to come. The milkman came with a horse and cart, he came the road, you popped your creamery can up on the cart and he took her to the creamery and he took back the skim milk in the evening. I grew up on a farm, a small farm, with six of us reared five boys and one girl. You reared your own chickens, fowl, that was all turkeys for Christmas. You grew your own potatoes. It was all heavy work, but it was great work, healthy work. They had enough, they had to buy your heat in the shop. They had their onions, they had their tillage, they had the oats for their cattle, and they had, the, they had their own material. They had to buy one head, only flour. They were happy people there. It was a happier time. I think it was happier. I think everybody was happy then. You don't get together. So there was something happy. There was something happy about things. Uh, maybe it was what we think that we were younger then. Maybe there was get together. You see, if you journey to a fair, five or six neighbours would get together off to the fair drive all your livestock together. You, came, you got together in the evening and came home again if you didn't sell them. There was great crack going to the fair and coming home. It was a, a sort of a fascinating place. Every character in the country had symbol at the fair. You had every character in the country there. You had, you had the cattle dealers in to buy the cattle. You had the tanglers, the bargain makers, making bargains on cattle. You had... Um, Stuntmen would come into town doing acts. The travelling musicians would come in in the evening. There was times when Johnny Dorn came to play his pipes. The travelling pipers of the 19th century were critical to this whole thing here in South Sligo because they were the ones that came up from Mayo and Roscommon through the Sligo territory. And they moved around at the fairs especially and harvest gatherings. And they spent a month here and a month there and they had the tunes with them. This style was built by John Callaghan, um, who has lived here all his life. And he tells me he had to build the style here to mark the spot where the Piper Gorman played for the dancers in the late 19th century. So that's a very direct link with the Piper Gorman, who would have passed on his music, some of his tunes, to the likes of James Morrison, and before that to uh, the Coleman's and the Hunt brothers and the, uh, the Donahoe family and um, all the musicians around South Sligo. There was a travelling family used to, from, used to come from Donegal. I think their names are Darties as far as I know. Great group of musicians that played fiddles, played different sorts of musical instruments. Very, very entertaining. They usually came in the harvest time of year to the fair. They came from harvest time, the end of May. They'd go round to the various houses, got round to the various farms, and uh, they would, would say, do the um, the work. And in the evening time, when did it get dark? They went in to get their evening meal, and naturally enough, they might have a little bit of liquor, and uh, that brought out the session. And from there, it developed. 
Mug supporter we pass round. And the local characters it stand up giving recitations. And you give him another mug of porter. Some other fellas stand up and he'd sing a song. Was no other there was great characters around it. We will sing one song for our little cabin home. The Snetherville would take a tin whistle out of his pocket and he'd play a round of music. Say in the 30s, 40s, 50s, it was played on the crossroads, it was played um, at the farmhouse dances. There was no transport, transport was uh, hard to come by, and uh, consequently people congregated in farmhouses. And that's where it kind of more or less would have maintained itself, you know. Uh, basically that's the reason why that it, uh, it was very informal and a very informal sessions were always going on there. About nine or ten musicians to be seated out here. Many of them on an old stone wall that was there. There was, on an old, there was an old stone wall here, a piece of a stone wall. There been nine or ten there, there might be a couple of older musicians sitting on a chair. Maybe an old lady playing a melodion. Playing like hell there all night. Dancing going on here, and uh, in here for plenty of liquor. <laughs> there were plenty of liquor on the job, and the musicians got any amount of it free. That would attract the, the, the neighbours in, you see. If there was few people who could play music in a house, you see, the other ones came in, you see, and then they'd share to dance, and that's sort of it. Used to be a regular dance. The door then, the door of the house thing was, it was hung on a thing like a buck on, you see, you know, you know I don't know what you ever heard tell the world over here, and they could lift it off, you see. Well, there were some of them then could step dance then, you see, and yeah. they go off this door, now this would be the shadow dancing, you see, and they'd lay down the door, and this man would dance on the door. Door dancing. Door dancing, now. <laughs> Probably the biggest effect was the, the introduction of transport, the motor car and the the commercialization of entertainment which was the dance halls and um, and the transport to get there and the bigger venues uh, and the course radio as well which introduced um, modern music. There was no televisions, there was no radios or anything in my youth. <clears throat> I remember the first radio coming to the, the locality. It came from America in fact. And uh, in uh, Country place down the road is a family name of Healy's, Owen Healy. <coughs> His sister was in America and she sent home this. And there could be 200 people who were Sunday in the garden outside of the bit of a lawn. Outside, he'd bring it out and put it on the window, listening to the football matches. The dances that I remember was very near the end of the era of country house dances because of course the the dance halls had taken over and they were the big attraction. The reason the dance halls succeeded was they could accommodate a big crowd and they took they, they developed at the time the transport uh, became available, motor cars and buses. Whereas the country house dances were all supported uh, by people who lived within a mile or two of the of the, of the venue of where the dance took place. The reality was that you had um, the country house dances and all that and the farmhouse session scene disappeared because uh, with the onset of television and all of that, you know, um, people didn't nearly want people coming into their houses, you know, <laughs> and so it more or less changed the, the way of uh, people lived. 
Well, of course, the dance halls took over from the country house, country house dance. That was the reason for the demise of the, the, the country house dance, really. Of course, when John O'Reilly started, started his revival in the 50s, and they were using drum kits behind traditional musicians with a piano complement, which is known as Kelly Bands, you know. In O'Reilly's uh, opinion, it, there was no future for traditional music unless you could get it across to the public, which wouldn't be a dancing public. In other words, that they would, it would be a, a, a sedentary audience. Then, that something less uh, offensive than the set of drums would have to be found, and the piano was obviously out. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. So, he then he was then seduced into believing that the humble bower on or the goat skin drum and the simple bones mm -hmm. would provide the acceptable level of percussion which wouldn't be intrusive. Since Sean O'Reilly started Chaltery Cool and started this revolutionary type of um, movement in traditional Irish music and um, it emerged to the outside world um, with the Bati band and uh, with the chieftains especially. John O'Reilly that had made it, that started it and made it even more known to uh, urban people in Ireland. But to the ordinary rural people, it was always known for hundreds of years. The music was taken from the, the kitchen and the snug onto the concert stage. There has been a great acceptance uh, of Irish music in the cities, uh, because it's a worldwide phenomenon, there was no acceptance of Irish music in certainly in the pubs, in the built-up areas, in a couple of generations ago, and in some cases it was um, no musicians welcome. So that's changed. That uh, pubs now will, will will happily have musicians, and they're happy to pay musicians. Um, on an occasional basis. Some of the groups now that are like Stockton's Wing now, for instance, and they start off very slow and they build it up, build it up, build it up. <laughs> and finally, they're passing themselves out. You know, and I don't. I, I, I think that's gone away from what I call tradition. My uh, idea of tradition will be where fellas came together in a in a country house around the fire and they talked and the the they played at an arm and thought a fella could step out and dance. You know, there'd be some fella there that could do a bit of dancing mm -hmm. or a woman probably. And you don't, you don't, from step dancers go to dance, you don't start them off that they're barely lifting their feet and have them in a way that they're not able to keep up with it in the wind up. It's a set dance revival, it's not river dance, I think. There was a great set dance revival in the last ten years. Everybody done the set dancing, and of course you have to play real fast for the set dancing because they think you're no good otherwise, so, you know. But that's, that's where, that's where it's coming from. Well, the, the whole thing about the past music is, is the set dance and they got that, that ripped into that crack, you know, because if you didn't play it at a fairly lively speed for the dancers, you wouldn't be a good musician, you know. And music is definitely is destroyed by speed. It's absolutely in certain cases destroyed by speed. There's a certain amount of people can do that mechanical, technical material in speed. But there's a nice, to, you get the, 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 the American fiddlers. They won't play at speed at all. They give the tune justice by their music. They put the feel into the tune. You can't put feel into a tune and drive it at 100 miles an hour. The limit is only 50. <laughs> River dance never appealed to me at all. Mm. I don't know why, it just, it just isn't my thing. <laughs> Most fiddle players today can, can as regards to speaking now technically, can do a lot more things with the fiddle than, say, what my father used to do. But then 
it's a, it seems to be it's a different style of doing them. But for one thing, it's faster. Which sometimes is not is not the best thing. I, I feel that when when the music when the traditional music is played very fast as it is sometimes, it loses something. Mm. You know, from having listened to say musicians back say from my father's time and people his age and that. I think there came, you got more, f there was more coming from what they were doing. Some of it I'm not too happy with, to be honest about it. We have some who have taken over for commercial purposes, adding a bit of the sort of a modern jazz touch to it, which is, is uh, in, which I don't, uh, well, I, 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 I don't like it. They're going away from the tradition. On the other hand, we have a lot of great young players who play the music out as it should be played, with no great variations in it. Nice to listen to. But when you, when you, as I said about the commercial end, of it, when you get those that take one of those, take one of those old tunes, such as played by Coleman and Morrison and those and put their own interpretation on it and what's, what, what's called uh, the upbeat, modern trend, which is hard to recognise the tune, well then that's, for me, that's really poison, that's simple as that. I still love to hear a good traditional player. They're so perfect and technical now as I don't like a lot of what they do. I don't like too much mechanical material. It's all a show business. Traditional music is not there now. Traditional music is completely, to me, fading away. It's technical, mechanical stuff now. That thing that's a grand freedom of the bone, freedom of the fingers. Very few traditional fiddles left in this island at the moment. I never could play it in first, to be honest with you. It's more or less putting the small man out, that sort of way. It's kind of going in now to the, the bigger stuff, you know. We're back in the EEC and things have changed. Since we joined the EEC, the farming scene has changed. Um, many of the farmers are part-time farmers now in this area, they uh, have a day job and they do the farming in the morning or the evenings or there's some of the children do the farming or they, whoever is available to look after the stock. I suppose like happens to a lot of families that, that as, as people are grown up and they all, everybody goes away and does their own thing and there's nobody left at home and so who does the farming? Mm -hmm. So the farm was, it was sold. When the wife died, they said, that's my, my end of my farming. There's a lot of farms that have never been willed, you know, and, and it causes great problems. The siblings are claiming rights to it and everything like that. And in many cases, the farm has to be put for sale and divided in situations like that. This is the whole governmental system of the Western world is inclined towards for the vast number of years has inclined towards centralization, mm. towards standardization, all that sort of thing. And um, they believe that the role of the local community 
at a local rural community has no longer any remnants in this modern world, you know. The majority of uh, people living in urban set in urban setup have a rural background. That was the traditional way of things in Ireland. Now that's changing because of the the changing profile of the population. You know, you have more um, immigrants today and you have more and more uh, people growing who have been born in the cities and have grown up in the cities uh, who have, lo who have lo are, are losing or have lost contact I suppose with the rural connection. But in the normal everyday they meetings, they're not actually meeting them on the road because they're travelling in cars. They don't meet people along the road, which was a normal occurrence, we say, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, you met people along the road, you, you were able to talk, you met them and you knew what was happening in an area. And that's, that exclusion is, is kind of more or less affecting an awful lot of people. Years ago, you could leave your door open and welcome anyone into the house, but nowadays, it's not safe to leave, you know, to leave your door open. That's just the way it has changed. The young people are faced, you know, with the alternative, naturally, the, 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 the world of phenomenon of, of modern music. So it's the world of the, the disco. They, they come around to, I think, uh, an appreciation of Irish music later on, maybe, in life. The older musicians are still looked up to. They're the vehicles of transmission. Judging from mm. the number of, of youngsters who are learning to play music, mm. and they're, they're not just learning to play a fiddle, you know, they're learning to play five or six instruments. There are very, very few learning by ear. Now, I, I, I've taught music for the last 20 years. I've tried um, teaching kids by ear because I do feel the thing about learning by ear and learning by note, you know, you learn by note, you will always play that exactly as you learned it from those notes. Mm -hmm. You learn by ear you pick it up from somebody else, but you never pick it up exactly as that person played it. You play something different along the way in it. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me is, is, it is more traditional to do that. But there are, yes, there are, most children are, the, yes, they, they learn from, they learn from notes. I know when I was growing up, there was very, very few people teaching the music, you know, uh, it may have been passed on in, in, in through maybe from father or mother down to, to son or daughter or whatever in the home or otherwise or maybe from uh, passed it on to a, a neighbour or something like that but there was no formal classes today that has all changed and in every town there isn't a town within the country but has a huge uh, has a number of teachers teaching different instruments and as a result you have yeah, and it's even happened through the school system, which is great. The Department of Education are promoting it as well, which is very good. And uh, as a result, you have a huge uh, level increase in the number of young people learning music. Hello, Sean and Dolan, how are you doing? Hi. Are you coming in to play a few tunes with me? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Come on in. What's up? Well, I'm going to kick off 20, so that one just sells, honestly. Well, let's hear from the best. Well, the leash was winning there by three points, I know. Can't have heard. A good match now. Well? Do you think I'm coming back? Well, they might. I mean, now the second half is coming up. Well, how are you keeping it, Emma? Oh, that's fine. How are you the summer holidays going? Good. Coming to an end though, is that right? Yeah, yeah. back to school. When is the school opening then? September 1st. 1st of September, oh yeah. Well you get the all Ireland flying before that anyway. Yeah. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah. Very good. I should know that you came down to me, we might have a few old tunes anyway. 
Right. See how you got hold of the the copper plates and <laughs> two plates. We must give another run over them anyway. <coughs> The session is what's part of the traditional music scene these days. It's the heart of traditional music. Public houses came into Ireland like they were kind of replaced the country house dances and the country house gatherings. And uh, it's the, it's for people ga gathered for sessions and it's a, it's a huge social thing. I've met an awful lot of people through sessions and through, mu through musical gatherings. Some of the best friends I've ever met I've been through music. I suppose I'm very lucky in that regard. A lot of us have picked up our tunes from it's, it's music sessions. You know, you're, you're playing a music session. There always comes up a tune that, that you don't have. We have to look forward, way back, we have to look way into the future. The generations probably unborn, you know. What was passed on to us, we have to pass on something to them. They have a right to that, the majority of the people. They don't seem to think that maybe future generations will probably look back on, on, on our generation. In traditional music, you know, grows up with you. You know, it's passed on to you and then you pass it on further. And I think we all have a responsibility to pass on the music, you know, the same way as land is passed on in Ireland from family to family, you know, from generation to generation. The land and the music is very much the same. If you haven't the tone, yeah, you have nothing. Yeah. When I hear Coleman's music, if you close your eyes, a whole new world, a past world, an old world opens up and you can look back. It helps you to, to understand what the old world is like. And that's the message. and the bug.
Thank you, Lieutenant. <laughs>